One day, this guy showed up. He was like nothing I'd ever seen before. We had no idea where he came from, but he was wild. You can tell a lot about a lion when you look in its face. What's its life been like? The first time I filmed him is something I'll never forget. I'd recently built this low-angle camera mount from my Land Rover that attached to the side. And um, I made it for filming lions because with lions, you know, you want to get down on their level. You see them in the eye. You don't want to look down on them. You know, if anything, you want to look up. But, um, you know, I'd never met a lion like this guy before. And uh, when I, one day, Rui gave me his coordinates. He was out with the lion. And uh, I was so excited, I came in way too fast, and I came in too close. And the next thing I knew, I was in a stare down with this lion. And uh, he was so close, I felt like I could touch him. But all I could see was the scars on his face and his eyes staring straight down my lens. Over my radio, I heard Rui say, whatever you're doing, stop right now. And... Uh, I was in a very exposed position outside of my car, and uh, I slowly panned the camera away from Njinga's glare um, while his tail twitched outside my frame. And uh, I braced myself because I heard the lion snarl and, and grunt, and then I heard the grass moving rapidly, and I braced myself thinking, that's it, I'm done. But the lion had sprung the other way and disappeared into the tall grass. So from that time onward, I always came at this line with a lot more respect. <laughs> I actually used to drop a camouflage veil in front of me. I ended up getting nice low-angle shots of him, but never that close again.